Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Matt here. This video is going to attempt to answer the three most common questions that I've had about my camper pod. Number one, how do I load and unload it from the trailer? Number two, how much did it cost to build it? And number three, how much does it weigh? Let's get right into it. All right, so first things first, how do I load and unload this thing off of my trailer? I'm gonna show you this here in, in my backyard in just a section of driveway here. But as you can see, I have a small utility tractor that I'm gonna to use to help me. And if I pan around the other way, I have an ATV and that ATV has a winch on the front of it. Uh, I use these two tools in, in concert with the, tra the uh, trailer itself and being able to tip it to be able to unload this thing and reload it. Let me show you what that looks like. So to summarize what I'm about to do, I'm going to use the winch on the ATV and this strap hooked to the Reese hitch that's in the back of the camper that I normally have my bikes connected to. I'm gonna use that winch to pull the camper off the back of the trailer until it's hanging off the back of the trailer. Then I'm gonna use the three point hitch on the tractor to tip the front end of the trailer in the air, which it will pivot on the tires and it will put the back end of the trailer down. Underneath the back end of the camper that will be hanging off the back of the trailer, I'm going to put blocks. So when I do that, the camper is gonna end up sitting on blocks. It's gonna be sitting on blocks on one end and the very front will be sitting on the trailer. From there, I will begin to pull the trailer out from under the camper with the tractor while the ATV holds it in place. That is how we're gonna do this. And at the very end, I'll be able to use the three-point hitch on the tractor to lift the, the front end of the camper into the air, put blocks under it, and then sit it back down. I'm actually gonna put this on a time lapse so that I don't, th this takes me about, I, I don't know, Mike, what would you say, 10 minutes to do this? And I'm not gonna bore you guys with a solid 10 minutes, so here's a time lapse of what that looks like. So as you can see, with the tractor and the ATV, we kind of cheat a little bit. You could do this with a come-along, uh, one of those ratchet style uh, cable come-alongs, but I happen to have this equipment here and this is how I do it. I want to show you guys this while I have this off. Mike, come on in here. I didn't happen to do a whole lot of detail on how I secured this thing to the, tra the trailer, but I'm using a turnbuckle and a cable and what I've done is all you do is you, you wrap this around the bottom of the trailer on both sides and you hook it up to itself buckle it down and if you can see this here there's a lock nut on there that locks that turnbuckle in place so you don't need a tremendous amount of force on this all you're doing is you're counting on the, the friction between the bottom of the trailer or the, the deck of the trailer and the bottom of the camper, and you're just holding that thing in place. So it seemed to work really well on our first trip. Well, I got this opportunity with the trailer empty. I can't stress enough how slick it is to be able to have your camper on when you want it, but also be able to use your utility trailer. This thing, you know, it's not really a teardrop, Several of you guys have pointed that out to me. Yes, I know that. Um, but with the square angles and plywood construction and pocket hole joints, anybody can build one of these things. It's really, really easy to do. It's not that difficult at all. And if you happen to have a utility trailer, you could build it to fit your utility trailer and you would be in business with a camper in no time. So, all right, so the reverse operation of taking it off would be putting it back on the trailer. So how are we gonna do that? I'm gonna take that hitch and there's a spot to mount that hitch in the front of my ATV. I'm gonna pull the ATV to the front of the trailer. I'm gonna switch it out with the tractor and I'm gonna back the trailer under the front edge 
of this camper, get those blocks out, and then I'll be able to run the winch underneath the toolbox and up to the front of the camper, which I don't know if you can see from here, but I've installed a two by two beam. You can see it bolted on that left side there. You can see the bolts where it lags into there. There's a two by two piece of steel right there that's specifically installed just for pulling this onto the trailer. So we'll be able to hook the winch cable onto the strap and pull it right up on the deck. I'm gonna go to another time lapse and show you guys what that looks like. So my wife Monica is going to join me for this segment and so this video I said I was going to talk about loading and unloading which you guys seen how that went and just so you know the time lapse portion of that it took Michael and I about seven or eight minutes to get it off the trailer and it took us about I would say 10 minutes or so to get it back on but the key I built this thing so there's about only a, about an inch and a half of tolerance on each side between the side of the, tr the camper pod and the rail so you just got to take it slow take your time and to be honest if you were using a come along a, a ratchet style come along that's probably slower and safer if, if you want to say safer from wrecking the side of the camper so that's the loading and unloading part now let's talk about cost now I sat down and tried to figure out a complete material list and there's a couple of considerations. If I'm going to tell you what it costs to build this, I have to take into consideration the cost of lumber when I purchase my materials. Right, wrong, or otherwise, I purchased my lumber in the middle of the pandemic <laughs> and lumber prices were about three times what they really should have been and they were about two times what they are today. This video is being taken in late July, 2021, and I purchased my material six months ago. And I would say on average, the, the lumber and wood cost probably is down at least 40% from when I, when I bought my materials. And in general, hardware is probably down 10%-ish now that we're kind of coming out of this pandemic. So all of my material added up so I can give you some individual prices. So the doors and the windows and the back door, all the stuff that I bought from Vintage Technologies was around $1,500. Now it's pretty expensive for doors and windows, but I didn't have to build them. So it gave me a little bit more assurance that I didn't have to worry about the design of my own door. The large pieces of plywood that I bought, those were, let's see, I bought five sheets of five by 10 by three quarter inch plywood. And those were $115 a sheet at the time. 100, I wanna say $150 a sheet maybe. It was, it was quite expensive. They're not that much now, um, but those were special order. And if I were gonna do it again, and if you were building this to match say a four by eight trailer, you would use standard four by eight plywood and it would be much less expensive. And the material would be much easier to find much easier to handle there's there's some advantages to making them smaller so overall i think by the time i added in my raptor liner my cables and the hardware the insulation i used was three quarter inch styrofoam insulation that stuff was pretty inexpensive like seven dollars a sheet and i only needed four sheets i had quite a few one by four uh pine boards that I used to kind of trim out the inside and, and make the ceiling inside there. All in all, my price was just a little north of $3,000 to build this camper pod the way that it sits today. If I was going to build it all again over right now, I think I could probably do it for a little under $3,000. And so the next point that I was going to talk about is the weight. Now I'm going to just be honest with you. 
I did not and I have no intention of taking this over to a weight scale and putting it on a scale and having it actually weighed. Um, I took into consideration the weight of the major components and I added a little bit of percentage for, for leeway in case I'm off a little bit. So for starters, my trailer that I own, the SureTrack trailer, is a 5x10 trailer. It weighs a thousand pounds by itself, but that's with the ramp. So the ramp on this trailer is actually pretty heavy. I don't know if you've ever lifted it off there or not, but mm -mm. There, it's really heavy duty. So I'm going to guess the ramp probably weighs 200 pounds, just, just the ramp. Um, so taking that off there, you know, I, I'm going to still err on the side of caution and say just use 1,000 pounds for the trailer. The axle that it comes under is already a 3,500 pound axle. It's a pretty heavy duty trailer, so I don't have to modify the trailer at all. That being said, my major components for windows, doors, lumber, hardware, we've got a refrigerator in the back that pretty much stays there all the time, then the mattress, and that's pretty much it. I added the toolbox on the front. Um, the pod itself, not counting the trailer, the pod itself is gonna be between 15 and 1800 pounds. So if you add that up, let's just say 1,800 pounds plus the 2,000 pounds for the trailer, you're in the 2,800 pound range. Now, by the time we load this up with gear, remember there's five of us. There's my wife, myself, and we have three kids, 10, 12, and 14 years old. They bring a lot of stuff. We load it up with our bicycles. Um, usually we have all of our clothes inside there, our camp chairs. It's another advantage of doing the trifold mattress is the entire inside of the camper becomes storage area. So you open that big door and pop everything inside there and everything that you need for traveling purposes is right there to set up camp. So I'm gonna say by the time we load it all up, it's gonna be a little over 3,000 pounds. So uh, I, I definitely don't think we've overloaded the trailer in, in any stretch of the imagination, but if you're gonna build one like this with three quarter inch plywood, and I gotta remind everybody, I built this thing really heavy duty. It's three quarter inch plywood, three quarter inch of insulation, quarter inch plywood on the inside, and everything is screwed and glued, and all the joints are, I mean, it's super solid. You could crash this thing off a mountain and it'd probably stay together. <laughs> I wouldn't try that, but, uh. If you were gonna build one that was four by eight, again, I think you could cut all of these weights and everything down by at least 20%, if not more. Um, we pull this with our pickup truck. My wife drives a, a Ford F-150, so usually we pull it with the truck. It's designed to be able to pull behind my Jeep also. Um, I have a Jeep Wrangler. Towing capacity of the truck is like, I don't know, 9,000 pounds or something. It's a lot, so it doesn't even know it's back there. It's just a half ton truck. The towing capacity of my Wrangler is 3,500 pounds. So uh, when you put it on there fully loaded behind the Wrangler, you know it's there, but it, it, e it still easily pulls it around. So most SUVs and crossover type vehicles that you might want to pull this with are going to have a 2,500 to 3,500 pound pulling capacity. So just keep that in mind if you're going to do it. Um, but if you plan on pulling it with a uh, a heavier SUV or any kind of truck, no problem at all. Th those were the three main questions that people have asked me in the comments on the last two videos. Loading and unloading, cost and weight. So there's my best estimate. I do not have a full material list put together, but if you guys want to know where I got any specific component of the trailer, or I should call it a camper pod, just ask me a question in the comments. I'd be more than happy to tell you. And, uh, include the cost of your awnings. Yeah, the cost of the awnings is included too. So that's another major component. The awnings, if, you, if you're going to buy one of those awnings like that, they're between two and $300. And, and I have two of them on there. So that's another thing that made it, you know, a little bit more expensive because we went with two awnings. We went with two doors. Um, you know, I wasn't really trying to do this as cheaply as possible. I was doing it to satisfy what we wanted to use it for. So, um, 
and it's fun. I, I need to, to say that again. This thing is square construction, and I understand it's not a teardrop. Teardrop has that curved architecture to it. Building a square drop like this, anybody can measure square angles and cut square straight lines. Anybody can build one of these things. It's I can't stress that enough. I'm I was pleasantly surprised to see how many of these are out and about teardrops and square drops. Now when we go to the campground, we look around, we ride our bikes around the campground and just look for other tiny campers. So that's it for this video. Appreciate you guys watching this one. The next one is going to be a setup and teardown of a complete campsite for our next camping trip coming up in about a week and a half. Up in Petoskey. Petoskey, Michigan. So stay tuned. More to come. Thanks for watching.